Now, I just want to go back to one of my definitions here um, a little bit earlier. I had this Word document where I was introducing some terminology. So we've got a shared field in two tables. It's the primary key in one table. It's the foreign key in the other table. This has created a one-to-many relationship. And then a couple other terms that you'll see in the help window every once in a while. The table where the shared field is the primary key is now called the parent table, and it has parent records. The table where the shared field is the foreign key is now referred to as the child table, and it has child records. So when we do this lookup list, when you create the lookup list, you always have to start in the child table on the many end of your one-to-many relationship and look up information from the parent table where the shared field is the primary key. So in this case, in this relationship between custodian and client, the client table is the child table because it's the one where the shared field is not the primary key. So I'm starting in the client table and I'm going to go to its design view. And in its design view, we have this text field down here, custodian ID. Now right now there's a dialog window down here at the bottom with a tab that says lookup. And when I click on lookup, there is nothing in there as of yet, but there will be shortly. So I'm going to go to this custodian ID field and I'm going to click in the data type box where we see this lookup list, this pull down list of memo data type, number data type, date time data type. And that's usually what we do in this, in this uh, window. But this time we're doing something different. I want to introduce the lookup wizard, ladies and gentlemen. I'm clicking on the lookup wizard and apparently we're going to get some help from Harry Potter or the Hufflepuff gang or somebody in there in our lookup wizard. So. Um, it says we're going to create a lookup field which will display a list of values from which you'll be able to choose how do you want your lookup field to be populated. How do you want it to get its values? And I'll tell you, 95, 99% of the time it's going to be this default choice. I want this lookup field to get values from some other table or query. The other choice is I'm going to stop right now and type in a bunch of values that I want to be able to choose from, but most of the time the values you want it to look up are already in another table where you're looking up from the primary key. So I'm going to go with door number one here. I want the lookup field to get values from another table or query. I click next. Of course, its next question would be, well, then what table or query would that be? Well, let's see. I'm standing in the client table. I'm going to want to look up information from the custodian table. So I choose that one here, and I click next. So now it says, on your lookup list, what fields do you want to see? Well, the field that I'm actually going to be storing is the custodian ID. So I'm going to wedge it to the right from my available fields to my selected fields for my lookup list. I've just brought in the custodian ID. But if I leave it that way, yeah, I'll have a pull-down list, but the pull-down list will say 13. And I still don't remember whose name that is. I would still have to stop and go look in the custodian table unless I tell it, hey, on my lookup list, I would like to see the custodian's last name. I'd also like to see the custodian's first name. So I go over here, I click on first name, I could click on the single wedge, or I could double click on first name, that way I don't have to click on the wedgie. And any of you who have uh, dealt in these kind of wizards before, you probably know that the double wedgie would take all of the fields and move them over there, but that's, that's not what I need right now. And in fact, if you've ever had a double wedgie, why well, you know how surely painful those can be. So I'm going to get away from the double wedgie right now. I'm going to click next. All right, now it says, what sort order do you want for the items that are going to be on your pull-down list? Well, it turns out one of the other uh, properties of a primary key is that it is the default sort order for a table. So if I don't tell it to sort by anything, it'll be sorting by the primary key, which will be the uh, custodian ID. I'm just going to let it do that. I'm going to leave this blank. No sorting uh, uh, needed. I'm clicking Next. So now it says, how wide you, would you like your columns to be? And I can do like in Excel. I can set the column widths by touching the column header up here at the top and either widening it or shrinking it by hand, or like I would do in Excel, double-click on the right edge of that field and have it find the widest thing in the field, whether it's the name of the field, last name, or whether it's the data in the field. One thing that I can't guarantee, though, is that I won't get a longer last name later. So maybe I get this thing all nice and snuggled up, just great for Tories and Dekel, and then I hire somebody whose last name is, uh, you know, Pilsudski or, you know, something really long. I can't really guarantee that this will be wide enough for future names, so maybe I'll just leave it a little wider than it has to be right now. But there's something that goes on here that kind of bugs me. Microsoft Access suggests that I hide the primary key column. 
problem with that is it's probably the primary key column that I want to store. In fact, as I look in the custodian table right now, or excuse me, as I look in the client table right now, what I see in the custodian ID field is the number 2, the number 13, the number 9. Isn't it going to be strange when later I use this lookup list, I see Terry Deakle, and then I click on it and all of a sudden this number 9 appears out of nowhere. Where did that come from? So I usually say, you know what, I'm not going to hide the primary key column. I want it right out here in front of my face. That way when I choose Terry Decal and I see the number 2 appear, I won't get surprised as to where did that 2 come from. It was right there in front of my face in my lookup list. So I'm going to tell it, don't hide the key column. Next, I click Next. And it's got one more question for me. It says, all right, on this lookup list, you're going to see three fields, but which one do you actually want to store? Well, the one that I actually want to store is the custodian ID. That's the field that I'm going to actually be doing this lookup list in. So I'm going to tell it, yep, we'll store the custodian ID there, and I click Next, and I'm basically at the end of the wizard here. It says, what label would you like for your lookup field? And it was going to be called custodian ID. And I can't think of any great reason to change that, so I'm going to let it be called custodian ID. Uh, do I want to enable data integrity between these tables? We can talk about that in a few minutes here. Um, enforced referential integrity, it's sometimes called. And something brand new in 2007 carried over into 2010, I could actually allow for multiple values. Have one client with two different custodians. It's a little too early to talk about that here, so I'm not going to allow multiple values. Also notice my next is grayed out. I'm at the end of this wizard, so I'm clicking Finish. A table must be saved before the relationship can be created. Yes, I want to save that table. Do notice it never actually says that a relationship was created. It said you had to save the table before a relationship could be created, but I'm cluing you in, yes, a relationship has been created.